Hi guys, in this video we will be looking at an introduction to the balance of payments and then we will be finishing off with a summary. Okay, so when we're thinking about the balance of payments, we're going to start thinking about currency and money flowing in and out of an economy. So all economies are going to have to measure the currency flowing in and out of their country over a particular period of time. So we can imagine within an economy, say we'll take Britain, there's going to be certain economic activities which will result in money flowing into the country. And then equally, there'll be certain economic activity, which will mean money is going to be flowing out of the country to different locations. And therefore, we can imagine there's some sort of record of currency inflows and outflows, which kind of looks a little bit like an accounting exercise. And this is known as the balance of payments. And the balance of payments is a record of all financial transactions made between consumers, businesses and the government in one country and the rest of the world. So we're looking at the total amount of money that's going in and out of economy, and that's called the balance of payments. So a government is going to want to maintain a stable balance of payments with the rest of the world. And that is one of the seven macroeconomic objectives that we've identified. So the economic objectives that we have, they are economic growth, stable inflation, low unemployment, low inequality, the protection of the environment, balanced government budget, and the one we'll be thinking about today is the balance of payments. And the reason that we are concerned about the balance of payments is because countries need to pay for everything that they consume and receive payments for everything they sell. So like I said earlier on, we are going to expect that there are some sort of economic activities which will result in the country being paid and therefore they're going to be receiving some sort of money. And then there are going to be some sort of economic activities in which we're buying stuff and therefore we are paying, which is representative of an outflow for the goods that we might consume. And as we said, one of the economic objectives is a balance of payments and therefore we're looking to see that the payments that we are receiving and also what we are paying for are equal to each other. Now there's a different way in which we can formalize these payments and what we're buying and that's by talking about flows of money. And flows of money into the country are going to be recorded as positive entries. So when we are receiving payments, this is known as a money inflow, which makes a lot of sense. It's like receiving some money for what you're doing. And therefore, if we're selling something abroad and we're receiving money for it or a payment, then this is money flowing in. Then on the other hand, when we're buying things, these are called flows of money out of the country and are recorded as negative entries. So when we are buying things abroad, we'll be seeing our money flowing out and therefore it is a money outflow. So we can attach some sort of sign to these numbers that we get for the money outflow and the money inflow. And what do I mean by sign? I mean whether or not it is positive or negative for these numbers. So our money inflow is going to have a positive sign because this represents money coming in and therefore it is a positive contribution to our economy. It's money coming into the country, whereas the money outflow is going to be a negative sign because that's money leaving the country. So the balance of payments is going to be made up of two different components and they are the current account and the capital and financial account. So when we think about what our balance of payments are, it's going to be about how much we are receiving money in and it's also gonna be about how much money we are sending out. However, to break it down a little bit further and a different perspective in which we can look at it, they are split into two different things which are the current account and then finally the capital account. However, we are going to be mainly focusing on the current account. So in the long run, the current account should always balance with the capital and financial accounts. So the case will be that the balance of payments should always be equal to zero because if the current account is always equal to the capital account and the current account is considered to be a negative number and then the capital account is considered to be a positive number, then when we sum these together, if they're both valued in the same way, so let's say that the current account is minus 100 and then the capital account is plus 100. Well, when you add these together, because remember the balance of payments is the combination of the current account and the capital account, then that means that the balance of payments is equal to zero. 
and the current account is the part of the balance of payments account where payments for the purchase and sale of goods and services are recorded. So when we're thinking about different kinds of purchases, this is to do with the sale of goods and services. So it might seem like it's the kind of the raw exports and imports that we observe in an economy. So things like buying cars from abroad, that's to do with the current account. And then the capital and the financial account is the part of the balance of payment account where flows of savings, investment and assets are recorded. So all of these things, savings, investment and assets, they all represent some kind of actual money flow. So the capital account is primarily focused on real flows of money. So the actual money moving from one place to another. So we know that money can change hands within an economy and then also it can change hands abroad. So between countries and between economies, whereas the current account is about actual raw goods. Hey guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.